I welcome all of you, Nana here. And then uh, we are now going to make a deep dive with the supply chain. And then uh, we have now completed the six methods of approval. Now we are going to go into further of supply chain actual. So let me go on and share this. So if you go to the computers, go to the CTS training and then go to the procurement, fusion procurement documentation. Inventory that. So I have not added this over here. Now it is, it is already shared for you. So it is there in other one. I have not put it over here actually. Fusion procurement documentation. So if you go to the P2P process, on the fusion procurement documentation, we have a document called P2P process. If you double click on it. So this I have already explained. I will again explain you. When you make a purchase order, there is no accounting happens. So once when you receive it, the gate, on the gate of an organization, the receiving inspection account is it, the contra entry will be accrued. So this is the receiving inspection, this is the contra entry. Then afterwards, you're going to deliver it into the inventory. So upon delivery, what happens, your inventory material value will be hit from financial side. And then the material charge account will be hit from uh, your uh, supply chain side, from the procurement side. So it will be hit. And then the inspection gets knocked off. And then after the first two stages of accounting entries, you will have the accrual to charge will be remaining. This will not hit at all normally. We'll be coming to it a bit later. So accrual to charge will be the remaining accounting entries after the two stages of uh, data entry now. Now we are going to create an invoice. We are not going to create an invoice. Once we create an invoice, the accrual gets cleared and then it will be hitting what? Your, uh, this is a receiving accrual and then that will be hitting the AP accrual. When the receiving inspection, receiving, receiving accrual, accrual receiving, will be relieved and then the AP accrual will be hit actually. And then the supplier is asking, we are now made, made a purchase order of $11, 11 rupees or whatever it is. He is asking for $13. This is not possible in India. India, they don't allow at all. They don't allow you to, what happens, uh, make an invoice above the PO price actually. But in many Western countries, it is very much possible. So the difference will be hitting the invoice price variance. And then he is charging for this much of a freight, this much of a miscellaneous expenses, and then this much of a tax. So the total amount due to him is what? 15,400. So after three stages of uh, data entry, you will have the charge account to your liability will be the accounts. Charge to liability will be the accounts. In the fourth stage, we are going to issue a check to him. So once when you issue a check to him, then what happens? Uh, this accounting entries will be hit upon issue of the check. So liability gets cleared and then it will be hitting the cash clearing. Entry. In the final status, what happens? You will be performing a, a bank reconciliation. <clears throat> So we have a, a module there, find cash management module. So through the cash management module, when you do the reconciliation of the bank statement, then the cash clearing gets relieved and then finally the cash account is hit. So in the entire accounting of a B2B process, the accounts which are involved are what? The charge account to cash account. So that means what? What you have purchased and what you have paid for. Them. Or in other words, what you have purchased is very, very important. So the purchase price, the amount spent for purchasing is very, very important. The purpose of procurement module is what? To reduce the spend actually. Spend reduction is ultimate aim. So we are going to reduce the spend actually. So how we are going to reduce the spend? By analyzing this expenses actually. So how many ways we can buy the item? We are going to see in this, in this example, we are going to see what? How many ways we can buy the item? Right? So the charge account, the cash account are the ultimate accounting entries as far as the procure to pay life cycle is concerned. On a procure to pay. This is also a so P2P life cycle. On a P2P life cycle, we are going to analyze the charge account to cash account. So the charge account becomes a very, very important. So how many ways we can charge it Fine. that you're going to see now. So here we have one document called fusion purchasing accounting. In the fusion procurement documentation, we have one document called fusion purchasing accounting. And that's one double one. So this is the one which you are going to do. We are going to do this. So this is the one we are going to do it. So to do this, what happens is we have to first of all identify one more document. So this is a fusion purchasing accounting and document. We are going to do it. Click on it. I'll go there. So I will now go back. I will now go to the what's called your additional docs records file. I'll go to the serious training. I will now go to the additional docs records file. So there is a document called asset ex asset expense items and submitments. Find out. Asset expense items and submitters. Double click on it. And then we are going to see this document. 
So this is called asset and expense items received into asset and expense supplementaries. So kerosene is an asset item. We are going to buy it in the market. So furnace is for heating your billets. You are now doing a rolling now, fine. You are now you are performing your your company is a rolling mill company. So you buy billets from the market, fine. A steel billets are buying it. You are going to heat it in the furnace, and then we bring it to the rolling mill, and then we are rolling it into small small rods, and then the ro rolled rods, rolled into steel rods, are basically your finished goods, and then we are going to sell it to the customers actually. This goes to the customers. So this is your business. Rolling mill is a business. So you buy kerosene, and then you are going to put it in the furnace to heat it actually, and the billets. Will be supplied over here. The billets will be steel billets will be heated, and then once when it is heat, we will now do the rolling. Now. So once when you roll it, it will now become steel rods. So kerosene is an asset item. So when when you go and then uh, push it into whip, this is called manufacturing area. The manufacturing no area is known as a work in process. So in a work in process, we are going to push this kerosene over here. So this transaction is known as asset item into asset submentary. This is also a submentary. So asset item into asset submentary. This comes under the first category. Right, called the first category. So sometimes what about the furnace needs cleaning and lubrication? We have to lubricate. We have to clean all these things. For which what happens? There will be a maintenance submentary very near to the furnace. So we will not issue this asset item into a maintenance expense submentary. We are expensing it out. So there, fifty liters of kerosene is going to be expensed out. So we will now make what an expense receipt into the expense submentary. This is for maintenance of. Uh, maintenance and then kerosene is used for lubrication also and then cleaning. So we spend away this money for doing what lubrication and cleaning. So this sub inventory is known as an expense sub inventory. As it was another. So this transaction is known as what asset item into expense sub inventory. Right. So now uh, when you hire a, a employee, you will be having a new hire kit in which I will be giving the uh, employee a laptop, a suitcase. Visiting card, etc., etc. All these items are expense items because the laptop is not going to contribute anything to the steel rods which you are manufacturing and selling. You are manufacturing steel rods and then selling it. Fine. Normally, uh, whenever any item is not going to contribute anything to your furnace manufacturing, they are all called expense items. Right. Expense item may be cheap, like what about the bolts, nuts, washers, cleaning fluid, cotton waste. You may be using it in the same furnace in the manufacturing also. So those items are also expense items because they are low cost items. Normally, low cost items which are used in manufacturing will be expense items. But even the costly items which do not form part of your manufacturing may also be an expense item. So in our case, laptop is around fifty thousand rupees. So that is an expense item, an expensive item. So but here since it doesn't contribute to the manufacturing of rolled mills, steel rods, it is an expense item. So here I will not go there. I will not transact it here. New hiring. There is a subunit called expense subunit. New hire <coughs> stocking. We will now buy the laptop and then receive on this expense subunit. Right. This transaction is known as what? Expense item into into expense subunit. The fourth one. Expense item into expense subunit. Then afterwards we will now make a transaction type called new hire issue. So with this hire, whatever they will be issuing it to employees actually. We will not make a transaction type right? called new hire issue, and then we will not expect. So this is called expense item into expense sub inventory number four. So we have seen number one, number two we have seen, and then we are now seeing number four. Similarly, stationary papers like papers, pen, pencil, etc. We will be doing it, and then we will now stock it on the stationary stores. So stationary stores will never tell you how much of stock is there. So they are all called non-tracked sub inventories. Yeah. Okay. Okay. They are known as a non-tracked. Ah, okay, okay. So this is an expense item, and then they are known as what non-tracked. This is this counted as fifth one. The expense item into non-tracked subject. So fourth and fifth are almost same as far as accounting is concerned. There is no difference at all. Issue to employees, and then they are not. All the issues are not recorded. If an employee go go into a stationery store and then draw some two papers for writing it, nobody will record it. How much he has taken? It's all free. Actually. Now. I am now going to uh, replenish a hospital. My company is now manufacturing gloves, needles, etc. And then uh, these, I am now going to give it to a hospital. So we will not. Whenever we make a purchase order for uh, the hand gloves or needles, I will not receive in any of my area at all. I will ask the supplier to supply directly to the hospital. So this hospital is known as an expense destination, located. This is a. It is basically is a now. It is at which location actually? 
<clears throat> so we'll be having uh, multiple locations like hyderabad secunderabad and like whatever we'll be having so many locations so it's location based actually so it is not associated inventory org at all it's a location based reserves so item is an asset item and then you are going to receive it on the space of time so uh, we will now see what happens uh, uh, the third item expense item into an asset sub inventory uh, here uh, the stationaries may even be received into an asset sub inventory also so this is also another common issue so we have this now find that so if this is called destination as an expense the destination is expense the destination is not inventory in all other cases the destination is going to be inventory now and on all other cases the destination is going to be inventory like everywhere the destination is inventory here the destination itself is an expense destination so there are two types of destination one is an inventory destination one is an expense destination in an expense destination it is not ours at all it is belongs to hospital actually so an asset item is now getting transferred to an expense destination actually fine it is a location based what happens in distribution so in short if you see we will have this many transactions asset item at asset sub inventory asset the expense the expense into asset and then expense into expense the fifth one is also belongs and then apart from that we have got two types of destination inventory and then expense destination the expense destination is what it is not our company uh, location at all it is outside our company we are now replenishing a hospital we got an order from hospital so we are going to do a buy and sell actually we will now buy from supplier the gloves needles etc and then we will now supply to the hospital straight away it is location based reserves so this is basically called expense destinations <clears throat> any doubts on the screen now right so now we are going to make these four transactions for everything there will be different accounts which will be hit when you perform an asset item and asset sub inventory one account will be hit the asset item and expense sub inventory one other account will be hit likewise what happens for all the four transactions we want different different accounts to what happens to see how the purchases are happening so that the ultimate idea is to what is to optimize the spend we have to optimize the spend okay fine so let me first of all create kerosene which is an asset item we will now go on and create a kerosene so we will now go that click on it we will now go on and create our kerosene actually click on it i will now go to the product management product information management and then let me create kerosene go there <coughs> so go to the what's called your create item now so in the create item i will be getting what an asset item <clears throat> i think i already clicked on it okay click on it click on create item i will now put my master org over here go there it is a t010 so the item class is coming my purchase item table is coming and click on okay so the warning message ignore it on that some work so i am now in this instance i don't know i am not having any item at all so this is my first item actually go that click on it i am now going to get my first item so t011 right i will now say uh, kerosene kerosene asset item in reality uh, the nomenclature will be different fine only for understanding purposes they are giving you so take away and then put on the side so t011 kerosene asset item so if you go to the specifications you click on the specifications in this place in the manufacturing area if inventory asset value is this it is an asset item if it is no it is an expense item right. so you must understand this so we'll now go there click on it um, we'll do this so this is now in this place what happens is the inventory asset value is this let us now go there go to associate and then let me associate with child or click on access and go to search that so we are now creating a inventory asset right? t011 go there let me assign it to my child or select and then click on apply and then click on that. so my asset item is ready t011 is an asset item drop it down save and close so the item is now created now what i am going to do is i will now create a laptop as an expense item right? the price is high but since it is not used in my manufacturing i am now considering as a expense right so i will not go that you want to not click on it the expense item or normally usually low cost items but it may be even high cost also click on the great up you know that correct z01 go there click on okay click on s it is a t012 is it 
I will not say laptop. Expands idea. This is an expense idea. It doesn't contribute to the production directly. Fine. We are not going to give it to the employees. And I'm not going to use my. I'm not what I was producing. Uh, uh, rolled steel rods. Now I'm manufacturing it. This laptop is not going to contribute to the cost of the uh, rods. This is for employees. You go to the specifications, and then I will now make it as an expense item. So make the inventory asset value in the manufacturing area. We are the first area itself is manufacturing. So here, if you go there and then make it as no, it becomes an expense item. Inventory asset value is no means of expense item. Go to the associations now. Fine, let me associate to the child off. Go to the actions. Go to select that, and then I will associate to my child off. P zero one. Let me go there. Select it and then click on apply and then click on. Apply. So this is an expense item. P zero one one is an asset item. P zero one two is an expense item. Same and close. Now we'll now have a look at our sheet actually. So we'll now go to the word file, purchasing accounting. I don't need what happens the item name actually, but I need the sub inventory names. I will now create one asset sub inventory and one expense sub inventory. So if you go on and see, we are now going to have what asset item into asset sub inventory, asset item into an expense sub inventory, expense item into an expense asset sub inventory, and then expense item into an expense sub inventory. These are the four scenarios which you are going to simulate and then see. How the charge account is going to be different for all the four scenarios. So for which what happens? I have to go and create our sub inventory. Let us now go there and create our sub inventory. So click on setup and maintenance. <clears throat> I go there. I will now be creating my uh, sub inventory. So click on it. You go to the search. So the task name is what? Manage sub percentage locator percentage. Manage sub inventory the locator percentage. So organization is what T011. And then click on OK. So click on plus. I'm now going to create an asset sub inventory. Asset underscore sub is an asset sub. So I will not take a copy of this name. I will not put on my word file. Whatever you have it on I'll go there. I will not put it because this has to be exact actually. Asset sub. And then click on save and close. This is the tick mark which is now making it as an asset sub inventory. And click on save and close. And then I will now make one expense sub inventory. And click on first now, fine. I will now make one expense sub inventory. It's called the expense underscore sub. So go there. I will not take copy of it. I will now put exactly the same thing on my worksheet. This is how it is now there. It is asset sub and then it is expense sub. So to make it as an expense sub inventory, I will now remove the asset tick mark. It becomes an expense sub inventory. So if you make it as what asset sub inventory is no, it becomes an expense. So we have an asset item and expense item. We have an asset item, asset sub inventory, and expense sub inventory. Now we are going to configure our rules now, fine accounts. Now. So I am not going to perform this many transactions. So when the asset item is now transacted into an asset sub inventory, fine. asset sub inventory first of all, I want one thousand nine to be hit. first of all. Let us now create these accounts. Fine, these accounts are still so click on the now fine. We'll now create our accounts. So go there. We will now create our accounts for this exercise. It's called manage fine. Chart of accounts, fine. Value percentage, set percentage, and then it will now create these accounts. You go to the manage chart of accounts value sets. Let me query my chart of accounts over here. The T01 and then entry now. So I will now keep my cursor on the accounts. And then click on that manage values. I go to the manage values. So I'm now going to create the accounts. I click on this now. We already created four accounts now. So let me go and then create more accounts. Four accounts. 1000 to 1003 is ready. 1004 is going to be expense. Up to 1008 is expense. I will now 1004. I will now make it as an expense. So click on plus now. I will now make 1005. 1005 is again an expense. So click on plus. Next is what? 1006. This is also an expense. Click on plus. 1007. 1007 is again an expense. So click on plus. I will now make 1008. Plus. 
1008 and again in expense. So we've got five expense accounts up to 1008. Next is what? Time 10, 11 are going to be the asset account. Click on plus, I will now create 9, 10, 11. So 1009, this is going to be an asset account. So click on plus 1010. So this is going to be an asset now. <clears throat> and click on plus 1011, 9, 10, and 11. This is going to be an asset. So three asset accounts. And then Toll is a liability account. So click on plus one point. You're going to have toll as a liability account. So one zero one two sign that one zero one two. This will be a liability account. And that's it. And then I need two more accounts also to test it. I'll not do it yet. So click on save and close. So I have now simulated all the accounts, whatever I want to do. Thank you, Consul. Now let me go to the mapping set and then I will now do this one. You're going to mapping set and then will not go on and see this one. So I will now say material account sub inventory, we are going to set up as 1009. Now give it done. We will now set up the mapping set. We are going to set up the mapping set. So go there, click on it. I will now go to home icon. Yeah, I'm already there. I'm going to it. I will now go to the manufacturing and supply chain management. And then I will now go to the manage mapping set. Manage percentage. Map percentage. Set percentage. Manage mapping set of cost accounting. Management mapping set of cost accounting. And again, select the scope as cost management. And click on the scope, select as cost management. Apply and go to task. Select and go to task. So I will now make it as what? Cost management. Select it and then click on save and close. It is a cost management. So go there, drop it down, and then it is going to be material account. Material. Fine. And then query for it. So you will have multiple material accounts. Fine, go there. I will now choose the material account sub in metric first. So go there, click on I will now check on sub in metric. Material account sub in metric, I'm going to configure it. So click on plus now fine. I will now put my chart of accounts. So, drop it down. I will now choose my chart of accounts of T01E now. In this place, you go there. Go down. In this place, I'm going to give it plus. So whenever you are now going to put on the secondary inventory is secondary sub inventory. So whenever I am now going to transact on asset submitting, you not take an exact copy of this. Exact copy you take it. Paste it over here. And then here also, what happens? You put the exact number, T011. If you make a mistake, it will not come because there is not list of values is not there. So what they say is 1009 must be here. If an asset item is getting transacted to this place, asset item is an asset submitting, what happens? It has to be what? So item is an asset item, and then here. Asset sub inventory, I'm not going to do it. Fine. Item is there. I'm going to that one. So it is 10 iPhone, 100 iPhone, 1009 is the one. So secondary inventory, organization, fine. So if you're transacting on the asset sub inventory, 1009 will be hit. And if you are going to transact it on an expense sub inventory, on an expense sub inventory, 1004 has to be hit. These accounts, they will be giving it to you. Financials are giving you. Click on trust. You will not take exactly the secondary sub inventory name. Fine. Go that one. You take a copy of it exactly because it is not having any list of values actually. We are the only writing in the expense sub inventory of the organization T011. And go that one. It is 10 iPhone, 100 iPhone, 1004. So we are now given two accounts. When you are transacting on asset sub inventory, this is the one. And then you are transacting on expense sub inventory, this is the one. So this is basically for what? Material account sub inventory. Material account sub inventory, which is for asset item actually. It is for asset item. And click on save and close. It is now completed. Sometimes when you are transacting it, you won't put the sub inventory at all. We may not be putting the sub inventory at all during transaction. So if it is empty, it has to hit the org level account. Right? It is an org level item. So material level org level. If sub inventory, if all the sub inventory accounts are not given by the end client, then it will not hit the org level. It is a higher level. Middle account organization. So go there. We already have it on this. No, I don't have it because I'm not doing it, especially in the final one. Click on plus. This one I have not done it. Actually. The new instance I have not created now. Go down. <clears throat> go there. I will not choose the T01 COA. Select it and then go down. So here I will not at the org level I'm going to click on plus. So the inventory org, 
find this what t zero one one and go like one for this org what happens I will now say one thousand ten is our one so go like one I will now put one thousand ten over here ten hyphen one hundred hyphen one thousand one zero one zero one zero so one zero one zero is basically an asset account right one zero one zero is one zero one zero is asset asset account actually so when you are not transacting on any of these two accounts what happens it will be hitting the org level of one thousand ten actually so the first three are now done so let us now go on and query on that so org level we are now given now find account let us now save and close now we are going to test it we are going to test it so i will now go there let us now test it now perform a test so up to this what happened here we can take away i will now take one more one i am i don't have any duplicate so that is why what happened i am now pasting it like this now duplicate is not available you click on it i don't have any duplicate i am not pasting it so i go to this place let me go to the procurement and then let us now create a requisition go to the purchase requisition so uh, purchase is not fully configured actually fine i am going to first of all set up the preferences i just now only create the structure actually. the structure has just been created i will now go to the up update requisition preferences and then let me update it now so t01 lock one so t01 lock one and then i will now make it as an inventory now fine the expenses are not our locations now fine if you go on and see some i will be told you so what is an expense location a hospital location is an expense location where we are now going to buy and then we are asking the supplier to supply directly to the hospital location they are known as a expense purchase right because this hand gloves or needles do not contribute to my steel rod production at all i am not producing steel rods it has got nothing so we are now doing additionally buy and sell we buy and then we sell it to the hospital so this is called expense location so i am now beginning with the inventory location sub inventory is what drop down Since the location organization type, our automatically our subdivision will come. I will not. I will not say RM as one, just like that. So click on save and close. And then go there. I will not create a requisition. Okay. The preferences are set now. Okay. Go to the enter requisition lines. Let me put my other item over here. Let me put my other item over here. Go there. My other item is what T zero one one is an other item. Is a kerosene is another item. I will not give that. So everything has come over here now. Fine. Click on add to cart. I will not bring it to the cart now. Cart now. So from there, what happens? I will now go on and review it. Now. And click on the hyperlink on it, and then it will now review it. So click on it. I am going to review it. So click on review. So now, uh, uh, we have given two accounts now in this place. We go on and see. Fine. We go on and see. We have given two accounts. So if it is going to be an asset sub inventory, then the account should be one of nine. If it is going to be an expense sub inventory, the account is going to be or not four. Only two accounts are. And then if it is going to be a sub inventory which is not either the asset or sub inventory, whatever you mentioned in the mapping set, then the account has to be one ten. Now tell me what will be the charge account for this? For my kerosene item, anybody? What will be the charge account my kerosene item? <coughs> it will be coming in the bottom. Can you make it now? This is not our asset sub inventory or expense sub inventory. What will be the charge account for this? Anybody? Can you make a guess now? If it is going to be my asset sub inventory, if I am going to transact on the sub inventory, then it will be one thousand nine. And then if it is going to be this expense sub inventory, only two sub inventories we give now. Right? Otherwise, we can even give everything, whatever whatever is there, we can give it now. But in this example, I have given only two. So if it is not on anything, what happens? It will be hitting this. Now tell me what will be the charge account on this? Anybody? Can you make a guess now? So thousand four. Thousand four is wrong. Thousand four is only for if I am transacting on the expense sub inventory. You go there and see it is not expense sub inventory at all. It is RMS one. Make a guess. Thousand three. Thousand three is wrong because yeah, thousand three is wrong. There is no thousand three at all. I have not configured thousand three at all. Only three accounts I configured. Thousand and nine, thousand and four, and thousand and ten. Make a guess now. So thousand and nine. Thousand and nine. Had I had it been asset sub inventory, it will now become thousand and nine. It is not asset sub inventory. It is hundred percent. Huh? Thousand ten. Thousand ten is hundred percent correct. So if the sub inventories are not configured on our mapping set, it will automatically pick up the org level one. Is the org level one? Is the inventory org level? One. If the sub inventories accounts are not configured in your mapping set, then it will not pick up the org level. So it, this is not configured. If you go down and then see. What happens? You can now see the thousand ten is a charge. Now, I will not change it to what asset sub inventory. 
you are writing on it. I will not change it to asset certificate. So it is the asset certificate. And then if I commit, if I give a save, what will be the account here? Then I save it, what will be the account here? 1009. 1009 is 100% correct. Right? 1009 is 100% correct. Then I save it, you can now see that change will be happening. If I click on save now, the account will become 1009. 1009. So it has account has become 1009. Now I will not change it to the expense sub inventory. I want to receive it in the expense sub inventory. When I save it, what will be the account? 1004. 1004 is 100% correct. When you save it, what happens? You can now say it will be 1004. So click on save. The account will be 1004. Now tell me if I remove it, I don't know in which sub inventory I want to receive, but I want to buy. The requester is saying, the requester is the ultimate authority in a procure to pay life cycle. He wants this item for this much of a quantity, but he don't know in which sub inventory you're going to receive. Now, fine. At the time of receiving, the receiving people decide. So he's not leaving it as blank, and then he's going to say, if it is going to be blank, what will be the account now? Sub inventory is blank. What will be the account? Sub inventory is not there at all. If sub inventory is missing, it will not pick up the org level. Account. So, what will be the account here? Come on, I may ask a very big question or what? Are you hearing me? Anybody? So 1010. 1010 is 100% correct. So, if the sub inventory itself is missing or if there is any other sub inventory for which we are not provided the account, it will be 1010. It's missing. And then if you go on that, commit it, save it. What happens? Give us save now. So it will be 1010. Got it now, fine. So it will be 1010. Give us save now. <clears throat> now saving, saving, saving. And go there. Go there. 1010. So we are now completed three sets of activities on this now, fine. Asset item and asset sub inventory. Asset item and expense sub inventory. And then no sub inventories or some other sub inventories. Now, we will now configure the expense item. Fine. Expense item, we are going to do it. Expense item. So we are going to see this now. So we will now configure this now. Now go to this place. And then we will now configure the manager that is under the accounts. Expense account. So I will now say expense account. Expense. If you go and then query expense. Material account or asset account? Asset items. Expense accounts are for expense items actually. And expense items. I will now go on then. Expense account sub inventory. I'm going to get. So when I query for the asset, fine. when I query for the material, fine. Material query, these things, these transactions for asset, asset items, the sub inventory level and then organization level. So these two things are for asset items. Actually. If I go on then query for the expense, it is for the expense items. So expense item, and then I will now go to the sub inventory. And click on the expense account sub inventory. I will now go on and go on figure it. Expense account sub inventory. Let me add my chart of accounts over here. Click on it. Let me add the chart of accounts. Drop it off. I will not choose my chart of accounts. So this is my chart of accounts. For that. I will not select them. Then ensure that the T01, your chart of accounts name is coming over here. And click on plus. So the fourth transaction I'm going to make it now. Fourth one. So I'm now, what happens? I will not transact expense into an asset sub inventory. So let me take a copy of the asset sub inventory. Exactly, I will not take a copy. Expense item into an asset sub inventory. So go there, come on. I will not paste you here. No extra space. It is a T011. You have to write it very correctly. Capital D. It is what? What is the account there for the fourth one? It is 1004. So it is a 10 iPhone, 100 iPhone, 1004. Keep your cursor outside. And then click on plus. So when you transact an expense item into an asset sub inventory, 1004 will be hit actually. Go that you want it. Go that you want it. Go that you want it. <coughs> this is the one. Fine, this is the one. So if you go there, click on it. You go there, click on it. You will not put the expense sub inventory over here. Take a copy of the expense sub inventory. Paste it over here. Fine, go that. Organization what? T011. What is the account it has to eat? It has to eat 1005 actually. Expense item into an expense sub inventory, it has to eat 1005. Go that. So go there. So we are now completed. Oh, sorry, sorry. Go there. You have to put the full account now. 10 iPhone, 100 iPhone, 1005. That's it. Click on save and close. So we are now configured our expense item into asset sub inventory and expense sub inventory. Expense account itself for expense items. And click on save and close. Expense account is for expense items. Let us now go on and check on the same thing. Click on the process acquisition. I will now add an item. We, we cannot add an item just like that. We have to go out and then add an item. So let me delete this item. Let us now delete this item. And then save. I click on save now. So requisition number is one now. Fine. And then it is now save now. Fine. Go to the shop. 
I will not put the expense item over here. I click on it. Go to the more task and then go to the enter requisition lines. Click on the more task. So go there. So T012 is an expense item. Go there, click on it. So again, RMS1 is defaulting because we added like that. No, I click on it. Okay. Uh, one, a charge account cannot be generated for distribution one now, right? Because the transaction account definition doesn't derive a valid account for this purchasing charge account at all. Anyway. Because for this combination, we are not done it. Right? We have missed anything. Else. Oh God, what is the thing which is missing now? I made one mistake here now. It is RMS one. It is saying it is unable to find out. I did only these two. I did only these two. This one at the org level, I have not done it at all. I made a mistake here. Got it. Fine. That is why you are getting this error now. I will try to add the card. It says the charge account for this combination of expense item into RMS sub inventory is not there at all. It is not saying error. Are you able to understand it? The expense item into RMS sub inventory, I have not provided an account at all. That is why it is not saying charge account is not possible at all. Fine. There is no throwing an error. Fine. No go on and correct. No go to the place. The expense account organization I am going to look Click on the expense account organization. We can even have an item level account also. That is going to supersede the org level. If you have an item specific account, that will only fire. Otherwise, sub inventory, otherwise or Likewise, the hierarchy is there. The expense account organization also. Works. So go that click on plus one fine. Let me put it. So this is not kept at all. That is why what happens is not throwing in error. So go down. So let me go there and then choose my chart of accounts. Oh, God. Sorry. I will not choose my chart of accounts. This is the one. So you go there, select it, and then go down. Is it the org level now? Fine, click on plus one. I will not put the organization now. Fine, the account. So T011. Is what? What is the account I had to give now? Fine, 1006 I had to give. Go there. I will not get what? 10 iPhone, 100 iPhone, 1006. So if the sub inventory accounts, if you don't specify all the sub inventories, it will not pick up 1006 on. You got it now, fine. So this is for expense items and that material account is for asset items actually. So expense item into an asset sub inventory and then expense sub inventory is not put at the org level, it will not take it off. The org level. Now it will not have any error at all. If you go there, you if you go there and try to add the card, fine. So expense item into RMS1, it doesn't matter. So we have two sub inventories over here, fine. We have an account for asset sub inventory as 004, 1004, expense sub inventory as 1005. But if it is not any of these two sub inventories, we have provided the org level also now. Now it will not show any error at all. This is also provided. So if you add to cart, it will not throw any error at all. If you add to cart, it will not throw any error at all. Previously, error was coming. <clears throat> I will not go and then review it. When I review it, it tell me what will be the account which will be hit now. If I review it, what will be the account which will be hit? Anybody? I'm not going down. So an expense item into an into a, a non-mentioned sub-inventory. What will be the account? 1006. 1006 is 100% correct because RMS1, I have not specified anything at all. Then go down one of the Go that to one. I will not change it to what? Asset sub inventory. The expense item into an asset sub inventory. And go that to one. And then give a save. What will be the account now? Tell me. Expense Thousand. item. Huh? 1004. 1004 is 100% correct. Then go that to one. It will be 1004. If you go and then change it to expense sub inventory, expense sub inventory, fine. Go that to one. And then give a save now. Fine. If you save it. What happens? It will be 1005. Got it now, fine. And even if it is blank or any other sub inventory, it will be 1006 now. The charge account will be 1006. So we are now seeing these six combinations. So these six combinations we are seeing. Now I am the requester. I am saying that uh, I want a cable laying to be done in my department, in the mechanical department. So I want to have, you have to dig the uh, what happens, ground bit to uh, around one meter. And then lay the cable and then backfill the mud, backfill the mud. So this is for a two kilometers. So this is called an expense purchase. This expense purchase has got nothing to do with our manufacturing of steel rods at all. It is an expense purchase. Thank you. It is an expense purchase. So whenever you make an expense purchase, then the person who is creating the requisition for the expense items, he will be responsible for it. He will be responsible for it. And then there will be an account given to him. So let us now provide it what? This employee's expense account. Because he wanted what was a cable day to be done. It doesn't contribute to any of the four. It doesn't contribute to any of the four. In this case, what happens? The employee's expense account has to be. We'll now provide the employee's expense account. We'll now go there. We'll now provide the employee's expense account. Go there. We'll now go to what? My client groups. And then you go to what? Person management. 
this will come if you have added the human resource specialist one if you added the human resource specialist this icon will be coming so that take on the person management and go that along with that let us now query the employee you are now working on the first employee now we will now query it we will now provide the expense account so what are you going to provide you are going to provide as what 1007 as the expense account so every employee will be having an expense account whenever he is ordering for specialty activities so he want uh, to move an almira from one location to another he want four laborers he is now creating what uh, labor for shifting materials so that will be an expense purchase so that will be uh, accounted against this item so at the month end you will now see on 1007 how much of money is being spent so every employee will be having on account and that that will we can very well track who has asked for this particular service actually right so that management can question him or optimize the spend actually the main purpose of procurement module is what optimize the spend actually along with that one so now we are going to go for what the expense setup oh god this thing a long time it click on the person management as no moment i know it's not going to go along with that one uh no go to shop now manage mapping set is available so manage mapping set is no more required for this now we'll now go to the home icon oh my god and then go to the my client group and then go to the person management i just go to the person management so go that i will now put emp1 comma space t01 underscore last name comma space first name that is the way you have to query thank you for such not query it and then we are now going to define the expense account for him click on the hyperlink on this now i click on the hyperlink on this and then i will now go to edit you go to edit so click on edit and then click on update edit and update so here action is what you are going to go for assignment change assignment change thank you for the assignment change and then click on okay now assignment change and now we click on okay go down and then here what happens you'll now see the expense expense account coming expense information so i will now put 1007 as per the plan now right as per the plan so every employee will be having a separate separate account right so this one up i'm over so this is employee 10 iphone and an iphone 1007 so whenever he creates a requisition for a service it will all be accounted against this and then the management at the, at the month end or at the end of quarter end, sir you have spent this much of money is it okay then he will not see you know justify his uh, re requisition amount because the requisition is nothing but the origination of a demand the demand needs to be justified actually so you have not put the expense account only you click on save now and then you will not review and then submit save review and then submit are the three activities which you have to do on a hrm as activity save it first and then review it and then click on submit so that we will not get he will now make an expense purchase actually he is not making an expense purchase uh, he is actually in the inventory only he is not doing it now bank click on that so click on that now go that so click on review click on okay fine will not review it and then submit it so there is only one change in the review it will not save review and then submit of the three activities go down go down you are now see there is only one change here go down this is the only change find the expense information is the only change so there is another change, no other change here no nothing there so click on submit now by which it is now complete now he is buying it something for the company only inside the company only so the destination type is going to be inventory only but he is now making an ex service purchase actually a service is for what cable laying actually it is not an item he is not buying by buying an kerosene or a steel billets or uh, what happens the ropes or your laptop or suitcase he is not buying he is now going to buy what cable laying for 2 kilometers actually so that is an expense there is a service purchase so once when a service purchase is made the 1007 account will be hit now the 1007 will be hit. i'm going to not do that so here you are still in this place only we are what happens are doing it only for inventory actually only for inventory let it be any subject doesn't matter we will not create a requisition so when you create a requisition it will be coming Click on more and then click on the enter requisition. You know what it is. Go there. So it is not an item actually. He will not drop down. Then he will not change it to what uh, fixed price services. It is a fixed price services in which item will not come at all. It is not an item. He will not say what about the cable lay cable lay for two kilometers. So it will be category based actually. 
it will be category based so there will be a cable laying category so we can even take a report on categories also i will not go that there is one miscellaneous category that my misc it is a category based i will not choose this so uh, he will not say how much of dollars is not available today it is 5000 us dollars worth so this expense will be booked against his expense account now and go down and see here what happened 1000 is coming and this charge account is always uh, updatable in the previous case in the previous case you cannot update it this 1000 9 4 10456 these things we cannot update the system automatically populates and then he cannot update in this case if he wants he can even put it on some other employee in our company what happens uh, i am a manager and i have a technical assistant in my company that girl will be creating the requisitions for me i will not give a call to her hey come on you create one uh, i have to what happens the repair a transmitter why don't you create a requisition for repairing a transmitter so once she, when she makes it it automatically comes in her expense account but she is not asking for it i am asking for it so she will immediately come and then change this account to my account actually so that it will all be what happens i become responsible for all the expenses actually so whenever you are going to make a service purchase this account is editable actually this account is editable this account is editable and then go further it will be showing out whereas for a asset into asset or asset into expense sub inventories if it is for the inventory destination with the sub inventory destination then what happens he will not be able to modify these things we cannot do so now sometimes what happens let us say mechanical department there are many employees there they are buying everything only for the mechanical department all the services they are buying it only for this for the department so they do not want their account to be hit at all they want a common account for the mechanical department bit so i am not going to give what i am say a preferences for the service item as a common account for the entire department itself this will not supersede the individual's expense account this will not supersede the individual i will not go that i am not saving anything at all thank you that i will not what happens i will not give it down and come out of it so now here what i am i am not going to set up the preferences for this employee this employee emp1 belongs to mechanical department will not go there as soon as he logs in he will not go there click on update requisition preferences and then he will now put what happens the favorite charge account he is going to add so click on close he knows that he has got a 1007 account set by the uh, management actually go that on it i will now say mech department mech department's charge account charge account is a very important one they are going to analyze the expenses so go that click on it i will now put what 10 if 100 if 1002 1002 so my account i am now the employee here now i am the employee here and then i am now having 1007 but that will not be hit the mechanical department's charge account will become the charge account if i click on save so the favorite charge accounts i am adding in now if i click on save it is now added oh god what is this some java errors come cancel now but you are able to do it and somebody is also working parallelly on the technical side i don't know about the update requisition preferences okay click on plus now and go that then i can add it on and then click on save now this is required now i will now say make department charge the mandatory field man click on save and close ah this is address coming now it's not allowing me to we will not try on the other browser now click on it let's try on other browser see key any here from the smart i will now go to the home icon is it a browser problem or otherwise a generic problem i don't know so i will now go to the procurement i go to the purchase requisition and then the more task and click on the update requisition preferences i have now go and then click on plus now click on plus go there make department go there is it ten iphone hundred iphone one thousand two so click on say muruga and then give a same now so what what is this The, the favorite account is now asking for the number of account. I have now put this one T zero one. So the delivery location is important one number. No results found. T zero one. Click on search number. 
Keep on search. Oh God, I am in a different user altogether. I have to be an appropriate user. So let me come to the appropriate user. So I am in a SCM tool user actually. So let me log in with the appropriate user. Right? So the user's account will be coming up. You know, so log out of this and then let me log in with the appropriate user. Sign out now. I have to log in with the appropriate user. Now log in because they're all individuals. You know, right? So I will now say T01 underscore EMP one of the one. <clears throat> so let us now provide the password now. And then click on login. So now we will now set up that one now. I will go to the procurement and then I will now go to the purchase requisition. Purchase requisition. Go to this place and then here I will now go to the more task and then go to the update requisition preferences. It is already set actually. They are all set actually. And you click on plus. <clears throat> then go there. So I will say neck department. Go there. There is a 10 iPhone, 100 iPhone, 1002. So click on save and close. It is getting saved or not? Come on, come on. Yes, it got saved. Now I go here and then I will now create a what happens? It was actually not getting saved. So there is a problem with the browser actually. Now, let me again go for the same inverted destination, but as a, for a service purchase. So click on it. I will now go there. On it. We will now create what? I don't want this one. I have to go this place. Yeah. So here, I will now have to go to what? Procurement. Go to the procurement. And then I go to the purchase requisition. Click on the purchase requisition. Somebody has already modified it. <laughs> the springboard has been modified. Go to the enter requisition lines. This time, I am going to make a service purchase. Drop it down. So it is a Fixed price services. Item will not come out. Is there again a cable thing? Now, my account of 1009 will not come at all. Because the, the department's common account will be coming. I will now say uh, 1234 is the price. And then go down and see why the 1002 will come. And again, we can override. So, if a company feels that there are many employees, we, they should not be accountable for the expenses. Let the department be accountable. So they will be having a common account. And then this account can be overridden by the individual employees. When they are creating it, what happens? They can override it with the appropriate charge. And later on, what happens? The entire purpose of purchasing module is to reduce the spend. And so the entire analysis will now happen only on what? On this one now, right? On the charge account to cash account. This one. This is a charge account. Charge to cash or the ultimate accounting entries, which will be analyzed by the procurement managers, and then they will now optimize the spend. So sometimes Oracle even give a feed, uh, what happens, a uh, payback of 12 months. Let us say they are now charging around, so let us say, uh, 15 lakhs or 20 lakhs for the module. So in about 18 months' time, they say that you will be able to get back the money by optimizing your spend. They provide you tools to optimize the spend. So by optimizing the spend, what happened? The 18 lakhs will be paid back to you in about 18 months. In the, in the 18 lakhs spent you have spent, that will be getting paid back into 18 months. Actually. So that pay, the payback will be coming into the picture. The marketing team will be basically negotiating. So this becomes an important account, charge account. So there are four methods of charging, which I've seen now. So there are four methods of charging. So is it as an index funds? So you track the account numbers for all these four transactions and then try to optimize your spend actually. <clears throat> Got it now, fine. So this way we'll not do it. So let us say the suitcase is an expensive one. We found out this is an expensive one. So we will not give suitcases only to the person who is going to the, go out of the company and then do the marketing activity or whatever it is. Those who are sitting in the factory, they don't need a suitcase. We don't give it to him. So likewise, what happens? You will not optimize the spend actually. So need-based purchases with spend. So that is the ultimate aim for the procurement module actually. Getting it now, fine. So this completes the basic discussion of charge account on four many variations section. Four many variations. The expense purchase will be doing a bit later. When in the purchase order, what happens? I will now make the destination type as expense, and then I will now show it to you for an external location of hospitals where we are going to buy and then deliver to them. This is called a buy and sell. Actually. So we'll be having a look at it a little bit later.
when you go into the purchase orders. And that's it for me. And then regarding this, what asset item and expense item into asset sub inventories and expense sub inventories. Any doubts on this now? On this accounting part. So do it exactly. Then only what happens, you'll be able to do it. So let me stop. We will have a mental relaxation break for some 20 minutes now, fine. It is now 3.30. So we'll now begin the next session at 3.50 now. 3.50 we are going to begin. Now. Give me.